and have mercy on us. Increase us in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And cleanse our hearts and our minds by our intentions and our desires will be good and noble and honorable. Today, inshallah, we want to focus on Surah 53, the star, Nejma. As you know, we've been touching on each chapter of the Quran, a series, and each Juma. And today, we're at Surah, the chapter 53, last week 52, which was, um, uh, last week's 52, well, I must be slipping. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we talked about that one, so it should allow you to listen to it. Uh, the tour, tour, the mountains, the mountains. So today, the star, so we had the mountain, the tour, and now the star. But we want to start with a reading from the chapter to be. We want to start our reading first. Where Allah mentions the star. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa sakara lakum wa layla wa nahara wa shamsa wa kamara wa nujumu musakaratu li amrihi inna fi thalika la yata li kawmi yakkilun He has subjected, Sakar al he has subjected, made subservient to you, to you all human beings, Layla, the night, when Nahara, in the day, Roshensa, or Tamara, and the sun, and the moon. When Nujumu, Musakara, Dumbi, Amrihi, and he has subjected the stars to you. Not be ithni. Be ithni is by his permission. Be emrihi by his command. Emru, Amir, leader, right? Emru. By his command, he has commanded the stars to be subjected to us, to give up its benefit to us by his command. But also, he says, Inna fi dalika la ayatalika miyakilun. That in that is a sign, a yet, verses, communication, right? We government for people, yakilun, who use their brain, who reason, who think, and use their intelligence. To remember, we always mention this, a few surahs back, Allah says he revealed it in the Arabic, la alakum takilun, so that you may reason intelligently, and use your brain, use your mind. So Allah informs us throughout the Quran that there are signs all around us as well as in ourselves. In the ayat we just read, Allah tells us that there are signs in the lights, the moon, the sun, moon, stars, right? That he created in the sky for those who reason, who use their mind. He says, in the sun, moon, and stars are signs for people who reason, who use their intelligence. <laughs> throughout the Quran, Allah draws our attention throughout the Quran. He draws our attention to the vast creation, the universe, ourselves, the vast creation, and makes it clear that creation serves us human being, man, human being, Bashir, etc. That it serves us on various levels, physical, mental, and spiritual. We know that the nourishment from the 
vegetables, from the cattle, etc. The vitamins from the sun, from the rain as it is today, etc. So on various levels, that's physical. And he said there are signs, so that's for the mental. And there are things that affect our spirit. Let us know that their spirit is root. Spirit and wind, same root. You won't see the wind, but it affects you. You don't see sound. But sound can cause you to lose your balance, can burst your eardrums, even though you don't see it. So, on, so that the vast creation serves us on several levels. So today's kutbah is from one of those signs, from the objects, light, the stars. <coughs> and as we said last week's was Torah. And it's so was, as we point out, the mountain. Jabal is one. Tura is another. And the week before that was 51, the winds did scatter. You see creation? Last week, the mountain. One before that, winds in its characteristics. And today, the stars. And next week, the moon. Chapter 54 is the moon. Then 55, Ar-Rahman. <laughs> You see, there's an act of his grace. He's been so merciful. So Allah draws our attention to the vast creation and his many signs in order to give us a message about ourselves and the creation itself. There's a chapter entitled The Bee, The Spider, The Ant, The Cow, The Cattle, The Night, The Light, The Dawn, the early morning, the sun, see all this, all this creation, table spread, with vegetables and cattle, etc., right? <laughs> so it is obvious that Allah wants us to be aware of our natural environment. So today, as I said, we are looking at the star. A light that appears small, it's big. But it appears small in the heaven. Some may say bigger than our sun. But it's so far away, such a distance, it looks small. The star. So this sort of starts, Surah 53, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa net me in the hawa by the star. <clears throat> when it plunges down, when it falls. But take note of the word for fall or plunges. It's hewa. Hewa. By the star as it plunges down. Saying this to Muhammad the prophet and to us through him. Darlene at the end of Fatiha. Darlene to go straight. Sahibukum, Sahaba. We have the Sahabas of the Prophet, right? So he's addressing the people in the time of Muhammad the Prophet and always. But he says, Your companion. You're disputing with Muhammad. They were trying to stop Muhammad, calling him a madman, insane, that he's astray, that he's doing it for selfish reasons, what he was doing. So Allah says, by the, by the star as it falls, your companion, Muhammad, who you know, who grew up with you there in Mecca, from the quarish, you know him as Elamine, as trustworthy. You gave him your riches, etc. while you went away. You trusted him. You know him. You know his father, Abdullah, and his mother, Amina. You helped raise him. So Allah says, your companion to those people in, the, in, in Arabia that wanted to persecute him and stop him and call him names, etc. He said, wait, your companion, remember Muhammad, the one, the trustworthy, the one who used to help you, that you knew to be such a good person. 
Now that he gets this message, you said he's astray and he's deceived. So Allah says, Man, Allah saw he Your companion is not astray, nor is he deceived. He does not speak of his own desire. He's not speaking from you. Muhammad is not communicating. He wasn't communicating from his own personal desire. His own desire to be a leader. To be a prophet, to be something big. Mama was a humble person, a good person. He wasn't looking for that. So Allah says, no, he's not. They were accusing him of that, though. Of being a madman, lost his mind, etc. But selfishness, personal desire. So Allah says, he's not speaking from his own desire. But listen to this. In, in, we're going to go back to the top first. But, he, but here he said, وَمَا يَنْتِكُ أَنِّلْ هَوَى And it's translated as, he's not speaking of his desires, right? But the first ayat says what? وَنَجْمِ إِذَا هَوَى And that is interpreted as to fall, to plunge. Same word. One place is referred to desire, Another place it means to plunge, to fall. Not by the star in his desires, right? By the star as it plunges. And who are in their what you have? And it is no less than about the Quran, it's coming to Muhammad. No less than an inspiration inspired in him. Allamahu shadidun yukuwa Talk to him shadidun yukuwa by one mighty and powerful that Allah taught him through Jibreel came to him by one mighty and powerful. Dhumi ratin fastawa and when Muhammad was in the cave, that's what this is referring to now, Ramadan, when the revelation came to him. And he's in the cave by himself. And, it, and Jabril appears to him, and Allah says, Zulmiratin festewe. And he saw him, and he appeared, paused at a distance. Paused in strength and wisdom. Muhammad's saying this. In the cave, when Jabril came to him, and as we know, then Jabril squeezed him and said, "Ikra read." He said, "I can't read." Then he squeezed him again, "Ikra read," and he said, "I can't read." Then he squeezed him again, "Ikra bismi rabika levi fella," read in the name of your Lord who created you, and then he began to read. That's what this is referring to here. It says, well, and he and he was on the high arising. And they saw him on the high arising there on uh in Cave Hira. He saw Jabril. This sir. This is how it starts out. Then he descended. Then he came down and came closer to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he came down and came as close to him as two bowls of an owl, bow and owl. You take two bowls and put them together to shoot one out. So he came that close to him. You know what Allah says in that same way? Al-Atna. 
or maybe even closer. <laughs> so in Psalm, he came down from, and he came, he came far back, down seeing me. It was only the lip of two bowls. Oh, at man, or maybe closer. For eh, for eh, her in la, at the he ma, our hair. And he conveyed to his servant what he was to convey. So Jabir gave him exactly what he was supposed to give him in the revelation. Now get the bear for air do my right air. May get the bear for air do my right air. And Muhammad Sallallahu his heart did not lie about what he saw. He did not deny or lie about what he saw. It's this sort of the star. You know what says? Effetu maruna hu ella mayara. So you doubt. Now, you doubt, speaking to those who oppose Muhammad, who oppose in El Islam. The enemies of Islam at that time who was rejected and said, and you doubt? what he saw, and you know him to be truthful and honest. Now that's referred to came here at the beginning of the revelation. Taylor says, Well, like that Ra'el who nezlata ukura. And surely he saw him again on another descent. First he meets Jabril in the cave for revelation, beginning of revelation. And then Allah says, surely he saw him again on another descent. It was understand that that refers to al Ishra Maraj. When Muhammad the Prophet Salaam, was at the Kaaba resting, and Jibril appeared to him, and he took him on the night journey from Mecca, the Kaaba, to Jerusalem. And he ascended upwards to the seven heavens. That's the second time. And on each level, he met a prophet. He met, he met, uh, Jabir took him to the first level. And there, he met our father Adam. They knocked on the gate, right? And they said, who comes there? He says, Jabir. And who accompanies you? Muhammad. Has he been sent for? He has. And they opened the door, and he came in, and he sees his father, Adam. And he greets him, Assalamu alaikum, Ya Abi Adam. Peace be unto you, my father Adam. And Adam returned the greetings, Wa alaikum assalam, Ya Rasulullah. And peace be unto you, O Messenger of Allah. And he went on up each level. Next level, it was Jesus and John. Yahya, Isa, Yahya. Same greeting. But there he said, Assalamu alaikum. Ya Aki Isa, peace be unto you, my brother Isa. Assalamu alaikum, Ya Aki Yahya, peace be unto you, my brother Yahya. See, the brotherhood of the brother Adam is the father, but he's establishing the brotherhood. Then he goes to the third level and he sees Yusuf. Assalamu alaikum, Ya Aki Yusuf, Wa alaikum assalam, Ya Rasulullah. But each time he's knocking on the gate. Who's there? Jabril. Who accompanies you? Muhammad. Now has Muhammad been sent for? He has. Then from Yusuf, he goes to the next level. Fourth level where he meets a priest, the scribe. Assalamu alaikum, ya Aqeeli, Idris, my brother Idris. And you know, Idris, he's the writer, he's the scribe. You know, Derasa is school. Idris comes from that writing school. So, then he goes to the fifth level. As-salamu alaykum, ya aki, ya, ya, ya aki, ya harun. Peace be unto you, my brother Aaron, the brother of Moses. Then the, and he returns the greeting, wa alaykum as ya Rasulullah. Then the sixth level, as-salamu alaykum, ya aki, Musa. Peace be unto you, my brother Moses. You see the prophets, their brothers. Muhammad is inducted into the ranks 
of the prophet, the brotherhood of the prophets. And Allah blesses him to see and to meet and to greet them. But equally as important, if not more important, they get a chance to meet and greet the one they hoped and prayed would come, the seal of the prophets. The one they prayed for and hoped for and looked for, now they get a chance, even though they passed away, Allah brought him to them and gave them the blessing of meeting Muhammad, Muhammad the prophet and the seal of the prophets. Now he meets them and they meet him and he embrace. And then he goes up to the seventh level and meets our father Ibrahim. Allah said, this is after the middle of Ibrahim. Your way is after the middle of Ibrahim, the friend of Allah, etc. And he knock on the gate, who comes there? It is Jibreel with Muhammad, etc. And he sees his father Ibrahim. Assalamu alaikum, ya, ya Abu, ya Abi, my father Ibrahim. And Ibrahim wa alaykum as-salam, ya Rasulullah. And he prayed for him to come. We know that in the building the Kaaba, raise up in them, one from among themselves, to teach them the book and the wisdom and to purify them. So Ibrahim saw us, and later he met the one they looked for and prayed for and prophesied that in all of the scriptures, one like Moses, the keystone that the builders rejected, they get a chance to see him and greet him, even though they passed from the earth. But what does that say to us? That even in the heavens, dear brothers and sisters, they are human beings. They didn't meet gems or just angels or monsters, that they are human beings in the heavens. Would say in your human form, if Allah wants, he can cause you to ascend into heaven. In your human form, as a human being. Now we know the afterlife. <laughs> but this is, on this side, you can be in a heavenly state, if Allah so please. That's one message. But that's what this is referring to. That's where this sends us. On the second. And when he ascended, it says, In there, sit with Abdullah Muntah. And he went as far as he could, and without saying much, he went to, as far as he could, the low tree, says the low tree, beyond which he could not pass. In there, Jinnatullah near the garden of the bowl. If Yaksha sit right there, man, Yaksha. And the low tree was covered with what it was covered with. Now, Zergo, Besaru, Amatoga. Now, this is Muhammad the prophet. It says that his vision, his perception, did not swerve. That he stayed focused on what he saw and where he was going. And he didn't transgress, go beyond that. To keep this in mind, it's just the sort of the star. And we're just touching on it. Just touching on it. And then it says, Lock up, Ra'amin Ayati Rambi Hil Kubra. For surely, his Lord showed him one of his great signs. One of his great signs in that ascension. So this sort of the star, it begins by letting us know and communicating through Muhammad the Prophet Islam, that by the star, as it plunges down, your companion Muhammad is not a straight nor was he deceived. And he did not do what he's doing of his own desires. Then Allah goes on, as we just pointed out, and, t and reminds us about how he got the revelation, what was going on. And then a second time, when he saw Jibril and was taken up to the highest heavens. And, and it is from there where the Salat came. When 
Muhammad, the Prophet ﷺ, descended from the seven heavens, he came with the five prayers that we had. They came from his ascension to the, to the seventh level. So, moving, moving along, the last chapter, last week, as we know, entitled Tour, if you remember, we came to the understanding, uh, to understand it as referring to the way mountains tour, the way mountains develop stage by stage, and that Moses was on Mount Tour. He was on Mount Tour as an indication that he was developing stage by stage into the proper concept of God, that he was growing in knowledge. And the reason we, we know that is because Moses on that mountain asked to see God. Face, a large face, let me see you. So you know he didn't have the proper concept because he was coming out of Egypt, coming out of Egypt, and they had all different kinds of concepts. So he said, let me see your face. And a lot, as we read last week, if the mountain stands, you'll see me, etc. He, but he made his presence known, his power, and Moses fell out. Now, but the prophet wasn't on tour, he was on Jabal Mountain. He didn't have a confused concept of Allah. He never worshipped the idols. He never gave in to the idols, never worshipped the idols. He was praying for understanding. He was praying to know why his people asked him to know why his people was in the condition that they were in. And Allah told him to read. But anyway, as we pointed out last week, that Torah means development, stage by stage. And we pointed out that Allah says in chapter 71, Noah, ayat 14, وَتَتَّلَّتَكُمْ et وَارًا et وَارًا that surely we created you in stages. So we develop by stages and become stronger and fixed like a mountain. We can develop so high, so high, dear believers, in life, and never doubt this, that we become a light and a guide for those in darkness. Moses and all the prophets and good believers became lights for the world, like those stars. The old scripture, the, the previous scripture before the Quran, it says of Esau ibn Maryam that he took some of his disciples up on a mountain and he showed them two lights. He brightened mine, this was a star. One of Moses and other of Elijah and the lights came together into one and it's called the transfiguration. The previous scripture also says of Ibrahim's seed, that they would be in a strange land, right? Among strangers. But Allah told him, don't worry, Ibrahim. He said, because I will multiply them. He said, look at the stars in the heavens, and that's how your seed will be. The Quran tells us that one night, Ibrahim, this is the star, was it was in a peaceful state, in a garden, one night, and he looked to the heavens, and he saw a star, and he said, this, this light, this God, this is my Lord. But when the star set, Ephala, it set, he said, I love not that which sets, and to the star. In the Quran, there are two main words that are used to refer to stars in this chapter, 53. Although there are other words that allude to the stars and are actually named in the Quran, such as Cyrus or Tari, those words are not mentioned as many times as the two that I am referring to. One word for star is Kaukep. Kaukep. Right? And plural is Kawaki. Plural for stars. And it first appears here as star. When Ibrahim was searching, as we say, he says, Fellame Jinna Alehi Lailu. 
that when he was out at night, he saw Ra'ad El Kabat. And it translates star, if you look there, in 6 and 76. And then he said, Kola had the Rabbi, that this is my Lord. And when it said, I love not that which said. And in the Surah 82, it says, What he bell, the way he boom, that correct. By the star is translated when it sets. By the stars when they are scattered, etc. The other word which is in this surah is Nejim. Nejim. We just saw Kalkabat for star, but in this chapter, Nejim, right? Star. <coughs> and here, this one is mentioned in the Quran as star 13 times. And the other one is mentioned maybe about five times. And just moving along, we got to speed it up. There's always a point. There's always a main point. Allah says in this chapter 53, as we just pointed out, Well, next me in there, hey, where? And look what it says, by the star, when it goes down. And so 56, I have 75, it says this, Fale uximu in be mad wacky il nejmu nejmu nejum by the star when it sets. You see, in, in this chapter it says hewa when it sets. In this other chapter, 56, the word to use for set is is be mad wacky eh by the star when it sets. And then in 81 it says wa ibe nujum in ketarat. And by the star when it sets. So we have three different indications and words for star setting. And that's what we're going to get to for our point and close. But I, let me close the first part of the cookbook. Rap that that anti not be doing the hasana thing. Rap the accurate anti hasana thing. Rap the now that been now. I'm going to lie. Rap that out of me. Dear believers, brothers and sisters, I greet you again. Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Time is flying. Be patient, we'll, we'll have to close. But I want you to keep in mind a lot of it in Arabic that we may reason. Now, here in the first, it says, Hawa for set. In another place, it says, uh, Wacky, Wacky to set, to fall. In another place, Kedera, in 81, to set. So we listen carefully at each of these ayats, and we say, use a different word for setting. This suggests then that Allah is giving us a message as to why certain stars fall and how they will fall. Remember, we are mainly focusing on 53. Entitled the stars. Okay? And let us just take a, 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 just a few minutes and look at stars, right? With stars. Stars are bright lights. They generate light from within. They don't reflect light like the moon. They generate their own light. They serve as a guide to the traveler. Our galaxy, which is called the Milky Way, are groups of stars. The 12 constellations called the Zodiac are images formed by stars. Stars are also used as a symbol of justice, right? Law enforcement. We have five pointed, six pointed, and eight pointed stars, right? We hear that, right? Five pointed, a symbol of man. If we do like this, right, and you touch each point, this is a star. You hear two arms and that. Uh, uh, so, so if you extend your arms, there's five pointed star, right? for the five senses and our five prayers. Six-pointed star. We've seen this. Six-pointed stars. Triangle pointing up, 
trying to hunt him down. What they call a star of David, etc. Right? So three, the, the triangle pointing up, this six-pointed star alludes to the continuous upward and downward movement of humanity, the rise and fall of humanity in its physical, mental, and spiritual life. That you constantly achieve physically, mentally, and spiritually. But then you reach a point where you go down and you come back up. What's that? Asalat, right? We start out standing up, right? And we go down, right? And then we come back up, okay? And then there's an eight-pointed star. And the eight-pointed star is two squares placed like this on each other. And the eight-pointed star, the first Base, the first square, represents the four elements, earth, water, fire, air, right? And the second one is their spiritual meaning. Water represents morality, right? Earth is our material needs, right? Fire is wisdom. It helps us to break things down, right? And air is spirit. So that's the star, eight-pointed star. Quran is saying a lot to us and to humanity. Okay? Star also refers to... This is where we want to go and go. Stars refer to shining individuals. We call them movie stars, basketball stars, right? Brother, you're a star. You're, you're shining, right? You have achieved. You're a light. You're a model. So stars we are those who have achieved a high place in society, in a particular field, right? A bright light. So now let's go back to 53. What is there much more hawa? You know what hawa means? Desire. That's why I said your companion, uh, Muhammad, is not a stray, nor is this of his own desire. Same word. That's why we tell you to take note of that. It says, it says, when much me is there hawa by the star when it sets. But anyone who knows, anyone knows, hawa is desire. So that physical star don't have desire. That's talking about individuals that have excelled to become stars. But they're stars and they have their own personal desires. In the same word it says, well, man, yen, and that your companion, Muhammad, is not doing this of his own desire. So that not talking about that star, that's talking about those leaders during the time of Muhammad the Prophet. And now, who excel based on their own personal desire to be over people, to keep people in the dark, etc. And Allah says, by those stars, when they plunge down because of their own personal selfish desires, that's why it was coming at Muhammad. Because they were only light among those in the dark. When the bright light of truth is out, you don't see those stars, do you? They run and hide. But they depend on keeping us in the dark so that they will shine like a star. But when we come into the light, those false stars that are there based on their own desires, they set, they plunge to the earth and burn out of existence. All praise is due to Allah. And we reminded us and it happened. Our president spoke this week, so we have to close. <laughs> and he's a star. And those false stars are falling by the waist. They're trying to hold on and pull him down. But he's addressed the Muslims and the world about Islam. And it affects all of us. In fact, when he first spoke there in Egypt, he gave his greetings, but he said, I'm going to give you greetings on behalf of the Muslims in America. And you know what he said? Assalamu alaikum. On behalf of the Muslims in America. So although he was addressing the Muslims, he was speaking to the American people who don't know. So he said that. And he also said, we had the transcript run through it. As the Holy Quran tells us, be cautious of God and speak always the truth. You who said you heard that, right? All right, Nedra, the star. And where is he at? In Egypt. The mountain, last week's tour. 
our mountains form. Some they form in the ocean, the shifting of the plates. Some they form in ice. Some they form by men building pyramids. So that's the mount. And this chapter is what? The light. The star. And they just so happen to have a pyramid on the dollar, right? A mount with an eye and with light around it. Meaning your ascension comes up and you can become a shining star. But anyway, real quick, so so our president, this great time we live in, he said when he was in Indonesia growing up, he heard their band breaking the dawn. You're not hearing the band and it don't affect you some kind of way. And he spoke of the great contributions we have time to read of Muslims throughout the world. He says, I know that Islam has always been a part of American history. He said, the first nation to recognize my country was Morocco in signing the Treaty of Tripoli in 1796. Our second president, John Adams, wrote this. This is what the Americans, our people, need to know. He wrote this. The United States has in itself no character of enmity against the laws, religion, or tranquility of Muslims. And since our founding American Muslims have encircled the United States, they have fought in our wars. This is what he's going to go through. He's going through all of that. That a Muslim, you know, lit the torch at the Olympics, etc. So he say, so I have known Islam on three continents before coming to this region, etc. So I keep saying I'm a close, so we have to, for the sake of people have to go back to work, and I don't have selfish desires. I just get excited about doing this. And so he mentions the Jews, the Christians, and the Muslims, and Jerusalem as the place where the children of Ibrahim should move peacefully. And we talked about an issue of my life. You imagine this. This is a great time. I'm just saying we know this, right? In terms of certain things we never thought we would hear. He mentions, he said, I like the story of Ishra. In the story of Esau, Moses, and Jesus, and Muhammad, peace be upon them, join together in prayer. Alhamdulillah, he read that out. I mean, inshallah, just please keep up with what's going on, right? It all affects us. Our president was in Saudi Arabia. He addressed the Muslims from Egypt, etc. And this is the highest office, the most powerful country in the world. And we know what we was under, right, before that. So we do see some breathing room. We do see some respect coming. And so let us be prepared to do our part. Because he's taking risks, as we know, right? He's taking risks. But he said there will never be a war against Islam, etc. So, dear believers, the signs in creation. So we got a great sign. So let us close. Without Ben and Ati Nafi doing a Hassan thing, without the Ati Rafi Hassan thing, Rabbi Nadab Ben Nafi. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Nadab Ben Nafi.